Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcraft and today we're gonna to be wicking the new matte black metal bowl from 1617. All right, so this is the brand new bowl from 1617 that you saw in the video from last week. We're gonna go through and I'm gonna to try to wick it now and, and I'm gonna to try to wick it with two different ones. I'm gonna do the small one and the larger one and I'm gonna to try to do it with wooden wicks and cotton wicks. And of course the wooden wicks I'm using are gonna be from woodenwick.com and I'm gonna be using cotton wicks from Candle Science which are the CD wicks. Now, I'm not exactly sure what wicks are gonna work best in these, so I'm just gonna pick some that I think are gonna fit kind of the diameter of the vessel itself and the burn radius of the wicks that I know from these. So a CD10 should fit right around like a 2.6 to like a 2.8, 2.9 round vessel, so like a jelly jar. Whereas the wood wick, I'm gonna be using the number two. It's the .625 booster wick from woodenwick.com. Now, this one definitely fits a little bit bigger than a three inch, which is why I'm gonna put it in the larger of the metal bowls. Now with this one, the melt pool on this one, I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna fit this one, so I'm getting a little bit bigger wick in this. We're gonna put three wooden wicks throughout this one, and based on the burn radius of the .625, which is right around like three to 3.25, I think we'll be able to cover the melt pool in this one pretty good. And then of course with the CD10 and the smaller ones, we're gonna go ahead and put two of these, possibly a third one in here just to see how it burns. I think three might be a little too big for this bowl, but two of them I think will be wide enough to cover from end to end going the long way. So we're gonna go ahead and jump down to the table and I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm gonna to try to wick these, especially with the wooden wicks, because those are gonna be a little bit trickier because they have to stand straight up and down. Whereas a cotton wick, if you put these, and I'm gonna show this on the video a little more up close, but if you put the, but if you put the wick tab on the corners of these, a wooden wick is gonna stand straight out. So we're gonna to have to position those different. And then the cotton wick, of course, is gonna move wherever you want to. So we'll be able to put that on the slope of the jar and then just move it to where we want to. All right, so let's go ahead and jump down to the table and I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do with these. Okay, so for the little one, this one's gonna be somewhat easy. We're just gonna go ahead and fill this one with wax. Uh, and then once it hardens up, we're gonna go ahead and do the no wick method where we basically just take a skewer or a drill bit and poke three holes and then we're just gonna push some wicks down into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this one up with wax. All right, and with this one, we're gonna go ahead and fill that and probably take it to the, almost to the top of one of the edges. That's probably pretty good right there. Got a little bit of a gap right there. That way if the bowl moves, it's not gonna spill over if you have a full melt pool. So we'll go ahead and let that one harden up. All right, so for the larger wood one, I'm gonna go ahead and place some of these wick tabs inside here. And I'm gonna go ahead and place these around the inside. And I think we're gonna use three of these wood wicks. Again, these are the .625 number two boosters. And obviously, these work really well when you can just put them in there, they stand straight up. But since we're gonna be going on the sides of this one, we're gonna have to come along the side of that right there. These aren't gonna stick well, or these aren't gonna they're not gonna work well because they stick straight off of the bowl. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with this one to make it work a little bit better. And for this one, I'm just gonna be using stick tabs. I normally use red RTV to stick to the bottom of these, but this is just a tester. So we're just gonna go ahead and use these. They, they're gonna work just fine. The red RTV is a gasket adhesive that works extremely well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that to the side. And then once I do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate that wood wick up. And if you can see that right there, I just positioned it straight like that and then just moved it up. And I'm gonna do that to the other two. And we'll try to get some decent placement on these. And I'm gonna to try to position these again so that there's good placement. This one I might put up a little bit further up the wall just because it's so much deeper on this side. And then once I get that one, I'm just gonna hold that tab and move the wick straight up and down. And then the last one I'm 
gonna go ahead and put that one up the wall a little bit more also, cause it's on a longer oblong corner with this one. And then I'm just gonna hold that and then I'm just gonna take it straight up again. So now you can see we've got all three wooden wicks on the side walls and then we went ahead and just twisted those up so that they stand straight up. So that looks like pretty good coverage. Um, it's gonna hit around the corners here, around the corners here, and then around the corners here. So these two spots right here, I'm a little concerned with, we might have good enough placement and these wood wicks should burn wide enough and hot enough to where any excess wax that's built up right here will eventually melt down and create a good melt pool right there in the center. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fill this one up and then we'll let these both harden up. All right, so we've got the wax melted down. We're gonna go ahead and pour this one up to about the same line that we had the other one. And then we'll go ahead and let both of these harden up. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh these. We'll find exactly how much wax I put in each one of these because I did not weigh it beforehand. That one's coming together. The placement on this one is looking pretty good. This wick, I might have moved, I might move over, I don't know, maybe to like right here, probably another inch over, and I think that would be perfect. But we'll go ahead and let these harden up and see what they look like at the end. All right, so these are pretty much done. They're still a little cool on the inside, but we're not gonna do a test burn right now. Gonna let those sit for probably two days. And then we'll go ahead and make sure it doesn't dip in a little bit. These are pretty wide all the way across, so I don't know that we're gonna get much, as a, much of a sinkhole in this one. And then for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and put two cotton wicks in this one. And I haven't, I haven't adhered the wick tabs to the bottom of these because I don't know exactly what wick is gonna fit in those. So we're gonna go ahead and do this the other way. I'm gonna go ahead and make two holes in this one. and space those pretty far apart to where we get a full melt pool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut two CD10s. And then we'll go ahead and cut those down to size. And then I'll run a heat gun over the top of those. And I probably don't even need to because once I light those, the wax around it is just gonna go ahead and fill in the hole that I just dropped those into. But we're gonna wait for two days. We'll go through and I'll do a full test burn on both of these. And then we'll come back and do kind of a full wrap up and see exactly how well these do. Now I did pour a second one of the big one so that I could do the same thing with some cotton wicks in this one. I wanna pour four, or I, I wanna put four separate holes in this one and then put a couple CD10s. And then I was looking at some LX and HTP also. And then I left this one blank so that I could put the holes in there, test a couple different wicks. And then once I know the, the proper wick for this one, we'll go ahead and melt this completely out and then we'll add it and actually secure the wicks with red RTV. But that's pretty much it with this one. This, I just wanted to show a quick way to fill these up and especially on how to on how to adhere the wood wicks and get those to stand up since they did have to go on the side of the container. All right, everyone, that's pretty much it with this one. Just wanted to do a quick video on how to wick these because after the first video, I had a lot of people really excited for these. So really try to go through and show how to place those wooden wicks since I had a lot of people ask about the wooden wicks. Uh, the cotton wicks, like you saw, are gonna be pretty easy. We'll test a couple different ones in those, test the CD10s that we put in one of them. And then the other one, we'll just go ahead and we'll try a few different ones, few different sizes. And then once we nail the size and the actual melt pool of those, because we wanna test the melt pool at the top of that one and at the bottom of that one because it has has such a severe taper. And the main reason that we're gonna do that is because a perfect melt pool at the top does not necessarily mean a perfect melt pool at the bottom and vice versa. So the goal with this one is to leave a little bit of a wax edge at the top of that and then, and of course, as the wax burns down through the middle of that one, all that excess wax that's on the side of the container will melt down and create a full melt pool down at the middle and then burn perfect through the rest of the candle. So on the second video to this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do the follow-up with this one, wait a few days on these, burn them and kind of see how well they do. And of course, in that video, I'm gonna also start on the heavy glass containers that I was sent also. So as always, if you have any questions on these, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll try to go through and answer those and update and bring a lot of those questions into the second video. And of 
course, you can follow me on any of the social media platforms that I've listed in the video description down below. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, my website, and the phone number if you wanna sign up for any of the text alerts for new products coming out, new waxes coming out. If a vendor has wicks that are just completely out everywhere and they get them in stock, I try to text everyone and let everyone know, go to this website now, get the wicks before they're gone. So if you wanna sign up for the text alerts, that phone number is 253-303-7968. And of course, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for watching.